Hi, I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and here's what I'm watching. China's film industry and the country's soft power. 2017 was China's film industry's best year ever. The box office rose 13.5%, 8.6 billion U.S. dollars, with an audience of over 1.6 billion people. Domestic productions took 54% of the market. Significantly, China has been exporting its film and TV dramas, primarily to Africa, Central and Eastern Europe, and its Asian neighbors. Since 2012, exporting more than 100 Chinese movies and TV series each year dubbed into local languages. A soft power index has China rising in the top 30 countries in the world, coming in at 25th. Why is China's soft power deemed a matter of strategic importance? China has three core interests, its political system, its economic development, and its sovereignty, territories and borders. Soft power protects all three. By changing the narrative from negative portrayals of China, human rights, strict social regulations, to President Xi Jinping's grand vision of a new kind of global governance and China's broad strategic vision of building a global community with a shared future. Moreover, countries that appreciate China's culture are more likely to appreciate China's position on matters of diplomacy as well as to increase trade and business. China has soft power challenges. One is language. Another is the perception that China's political system does not feature the kind of freedoms and human rights that are considered universal ideals. Yet another is because China is so large and developing so rapidly that even modest efforts to protect what it believes to be its sovereign rights can be perceived to be aggressive or even bullying. There is no magic bullet in building soft power. Doing many small things with different constituencies is often more effective than mounting large imposing events that could wind up intimidating and reinforcing a negative image. Training the next generation of young leaders from developing countries is good strategy. Other countries should not want to be like China. They should only appreciate China and China's contributions. I'm pleased that China is building its soft power for two reasons that may sound contradictory, but I think are complementary. On the one hand, China will be more appreciated, disrupting foreign stereotypes. On the other hand, by learning what it takes to develop soft power, China will need to self-reflect, evaluating its policies as they affect others, because meaningful and enduring soft power comes from what's inside the package, not from what it's wrapped in. I'm keeping watch. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn.